Yo, do you want to start winning more trades using candlestick patterns? Then keep watching. So throughout the past five years of teaching traders around the world, I've seen a lot of people attempt to trade candlestick patterns with very little success. And even whenever I first started trading myself, I didn't trade candlestick patterns properly and therefore I never made profits using them until I discovered the three techniques I'm going to be teaching you today. And at that point, candlestick pattern trades started taking my account from red to green. So in today's video, I'm going to be teaching you what I consider to be the three most valuable techniques for anyone that's trading candlestick patterns. So if that sounds good, go ahead and click that like button for me. Go ahead and subscribe and click the notification bell if you are new. Don't forget to check out our free beginner course that is linked in the description and you can find it on the link that's on the screen right now. And I will see you directly after the intro and disclaimer. To begin with, let's very briefly go over the top three mistakes traders make when trying to trade candlestick patterns. They're in the top right corner of the screen. As you can see, mistake number one is having no rules for candlestick patterns. In order to trade profitably, we must have a consistent way of trading these patterns. And we're gonna use hammer candles as an example right now. If you don't have a consistent way of spotting these patterns, then you're gonna be asking yourself, is this a hammer candle or is this a hammer candle or is this a hammer candle or are all three of them a hammer candlestick hopefully you can see what i'm saying unless you have rules you're going to be inconsistent in the way you trade whatever candlestick pattern you choose to trade and if you're inconsistent it's going to be nearly impossible to make profits using these candlestick patterns mistake number two trading candlesticks without any other confluence let's say you have some kind of emotional bias to believe the dollar versus the Swiss, which is the currency pair we're on, is going to go higher. And then you see a candlestick like this and you buy and you, you hope that we go way up here. Then you see that we push down and it stops you out. So what did you fail to do? You had an emotional bias. It's always good not to trade based on emotions anyway. And also you didn't combine that with any other confluence. You didn't look at the trend of this market, which is obviously down. You didn't look for any other confluence. And that was a big reason why that specific trade would have lost. So mistake number two is looking for no other confluence when trading candlestick patterns. And mistake number three is not having a fully tested trading strategy using candlestick patterns. So in a nutshell, that just means you haven't created a rules-based strategy around candlestick patterns and you haven't back-tested that to see if it gives you an advantage over time. So those are the three most common mistakes from anyone that's trying to trade candlestick patterns. Those are the three common mistakes that I made when I first started and the three most common that I see. Now let's move on and talk about my favorite three ways to add confluence to candlestick pattern trades. Before we do that though, does anyone remember the first most common mistake from traders that are trying to trade candlestick patterns? It's not having rules for that candlestick pattern, right? So in today's examples, we're going to be using just one, well, it's actually two, but essentially one candlestick pattern. That's going to be the hammer and the shooting star candle. But the three techniques I'm going to share with you work, whether you're trading hammers, shooting stars, engulfing any candlestick pattern, essentially that you would like to trade. So right now, what I want to do is share with you my rules for objectively defining a hammer and a shooting star candle. I'm going to briefly go over this because I've been through it in a few other videos, but essentially a very easy way that I do this, assume that these are candles and not very poor drawings that I made. And what I do for a hammer is I pull a Fibonacci retracement from the low of the wick to the high of the candle, which is the top of the wick up here. And as long as the entire body of this candle is above the 38.2% retracement, then that is considered a hammer candle. For me, the opposite is true for a shooting star. We'll go over that really quickly. This should be pretty easy to get. So for a shooting star, what we're looking to do is pull from the top of the wick or the high of the candle, our Fibonacci retracement down to the lowest wick or the low of the candle. And in this case, what do you think we're looking for? We're looking to ensure that the entire body of this candle is below 
the 38.2% retracement. For me, the color of the candle does not matter. So this could be green and this could be red. Okay, so there's a very brief overview of the rules we're gonna be using for our candlestick patterns that we're gonna use in today's examples. Let's now dive into my favorite three ways to add confluence to any candlestick patterns. All right, so the first way we're gonna take a look at adding confluence to candlestick patterns is by looking for an area value with the trend. Now, if that sounded very complicated, don't worry, it's super simple. And for today's example, we're gonna be using the 50 period exponential moving average, which is this blue line you see on my chart as our trend indication tool. If price is above it, we're looking at that as an uptrend. If price is below it, we're looking at that as a downtrend. So we wanna be in line with our trend. If we're above the 50 period moving average, we wanna look for long trades using our candlestick pattern. We're also looking for this to combine with an area of value. So one of my favorite ways to look for areas of value with the trend is when the latest level of structure that was broken in that trend. So here we have an uptrend. This is the latest level that was broken. So the last level that price broke to continue the uptrend. And I want that to align with my moving average. So that has like a double confluence situation there when it aligns with that moving average. And that's when I see it as okay. And I see it as giving me an advantage to trade a candlestick pattern. So here we are on the Canada yen. And what we get in this situation here after aligning all of that, our area of value that's with the trend of the market, coming down into our latest level of resistance that was broken in the uptrend and also lining up with our 50 period moving average, we then get what? We then get exactly what we need in terms of our rules for a hammer candle. Let's check and make sure we're going to pull a Fibonacci retracement from the low of the wick up to the high of this candle. As you can see, the entire body is in fact above the 38.2% retracement. So this is one of my favorite ways to give myself an actual advantage when trading candlestick patterns. And as you'll see, whenever I click play on market replay here, it did in fact work out really well here on the Canada yen. So that was a bullish example of using an area of value with the trend. Important things to keep in mind, trend for us in this simplistic example is going to be the 50 period moving average. Exponential moving average is what I use. Area of value is going to be defined as when the latest level of structure that was broken in our uptrend combines with a pullback to our moving average. That's what we use as our area of value. So it's super rules based and yet super simple and elegant. Let's go ahead and move on now and take a look at a bearish example of using an area of value with the trend. So for a bullish example, we were looking for price to be above the 50 period moving average. For a bearish example, what do you think we're looking for? Price needs to be below the 50 period moving average. And for our area of value, remember, we're looking for the latest level of structure that was broken in trend since it's a downtrend that means we're looking at this level because it was the latest level of structure that was broken in the downtrend we want this level to then combine with price coming up to touch our 50 period moving average that gives us our area of value so we're in trend we're at our area of value and for a bearish trade we'd be looking for the shooting star example not the hammer so let's go ahead and take a look at what happens here. If I push forward, you'll see that we meet our criteria and I'll make that really easy to notice once I pull a Fibonacci retracement from the high of the candle down to the low of the candle. Obviously the body of that candle is below the 38.2% retracement, therefore a valid entry reason using that candlestick pattern. And if I hit play, you'll see that this in fact did work out really well here on the dollar Swiss. As I mentioned in every video I do, these examples are winning trades. Yes, but that does not mean this wins all the time. It's just a lot easier to show examples of winning trades. With that said, keep that in mind as we go through the rest of the video. And let's now move on to the second way to add major confluence to candlestick pattern trades. The second way to add confluence to candlestick patterns is to use them with already established chart patterns. For these examples, we're going to use very simple 
chart patterns, which are going to be double tops and bottoms. I don't have time to go through my exact rules for double tops and bottoms, but if you would like to see them, I'll put a link in the top right corner of the screen for you, or you can just look up chart patterns and look for the video with the trading channel being the author. I think it's in like the top three if you just look that keyword up on YouTube. But this is how we're going to be using them with chart patterns. In this case, as you can see, we've seen price push down to one bottom, push up to what could be the neckline of a double bottom, and we're pushing back down. So with this being the case, we're just waiting on this double bottom to form, right? Let's see what happens. Okay, so now what has happened? Well, we've created our double bottom here, and we've also put in a hammer candle. As you can see, the body of this candle is in fact above the 38.2% retracement. So in using candlestick patterns in confluence with chart patterns, we're just adding that candlestick pattern as extra confirmation at the end of our chart patterns, right? So at the end of that double bottom, we then have our hammer candle, we then have an entry, and we are ready to pull the trigger on the trade. If this is something you choose to trade and test or whatever you'd like to do with it. And as you can see, we push up to hit about a 3.3 reward to risk ratio really easily here on this trade. So again, the second way I like to add confluence to candlestick patterns is using them alongside with already established chart patterns of any kind. I mean like double tops and bottoms, head and shoulder patterns. But with that being the case, let's now move on to the bearish version of using candlestick patterns with chart patterns in order to increase the accuracy of our candlestick pattern trades. For our bearish version of this, see if you can spot it on the chart. It's pretty simple because I've already put price exactly where it needs to be, but as you can see, we have a push up out of price that hits one top, a neckline of a double top, and then we're pushing back up to make our possible double top. So in this case, what are we looking for? Since we're looking to go short, this is a bearish trade, we'd be looking for that shooting star candle at the end of our double top, right? So let's go ahead and hit play. It says that look like the rules we have for our shooting star candle, it does, right? But we have an objective way of defining it because we have clear rules for this. So pulling down from the high of the candle to the low of the candle, you can see that the whole body of this candle is in fact under the 38.2% retracement, giving me a valid shooting star combined with an already existing chart pattern. So that's the second way I like to use confluence with my candlestick pattern trades that dramatically increases the accuracy of candlestick pattern trades. Let's now move on to the third and final way I like to use confluence with candlestick patterns. Before we do that, I just wanted to let you know that we are opening enrollment to the TTC Forex University for the first seven days of 2022. And the reason we're doing this is because throughout 2022, we're gonna be adding a lot more content to the course and possibly even adding email alerts. And along with those email alerts, we'll be adding advanced patterns and a full course on discretionary trading and many other system-based strategies. So with all that extra work, the price will be getting higher throughout 2022. But for the first seven days of 2022, you can get in at the original price of $497. So for any of you that were waiting on enrollment to open back up, it is currently open. You can go to the link on the screen right now in order to grab your spot. And if not, that's totally fine too. Let's go ahead and get back to the third and final way I like to add confluence to my candlestick pattern trades. So the final way I like to use confluence with candlestick patterns is as reversals with multiple confluence. And if you're new, I know that sounded like a lot of words put together that don't make any sense, but don't worry. I'm going to give you a really simple example of this right now. In this case, we're looking at a short example first. We'll look at a bullish example afterwards. So for this example and for example purposes, I'm going to explain what using these entries like candlestick patterns in multiple confluence areas for reversals looks like. The first thing I wanna see, and this is my favorite combination of confluences to use for reversals is I want to see price at a major level of structure. Because we're going short, that level of structure needs to be a level of resistance. I'm not gonna spell all that out, you get it. So we're looking for price to be at a level of resistance. I want that to combine with RSI divergence. That's my favorite way of putting confluences together for reversals. RSI divergence 
For that, you're going to need an RSI indicator on your chart. All you got to do is go to indicators and type in RSI. It should pop up on any charting platform. And the settings for the RSI are just the stock settings. I just have it at a 14 period RSI. Divergence is extremely simple. All that means is that price is making higher highs, as we can see right here. And the indicator you're looking at, in this case, the RSI, is making lower highs. When those two things combine, we call that RSI divergence. So we're looking for reversals using candlestick patterns at a major level of structure resistance combined with RSI divergence. Since we have our confluences there, we do have this major level of resistance. We do have RSI divergence. What's the only thing we're missing? That shooting star candle, because we're trying to go short, right? So if I hit play here, you'll see that we in fact do get that shooting star candle. If I pull a Fibonacci retracement for our objective rules, you'll see that the whole body of that candle is below the 38.2% retracement. If I put our position tool on there and move our stop loss to a normal point, target, let's say a two to one, and click play, you'll see that that in fact did work out really well using candlestick patterns with multiple confluence for entries on a reversal trade. Let's take a look at a bullish example of this as well. On this example, I've already let the entry candle be seen, but can you see it? Can you see the actual entry? Well, let's go through the rules. First off, we need price to be at a major level of structure. If I zoom the chart out, you'll see that this level of structure support has acted as support before in a major way. Therefore, we have major support. Scrolling back to the right, you can see if I bring up the RSI indicator that we in fact do have RSI divergence. Why is that? Well, because we have price making lower lows while the RSI, drew that really badly, is making higher lows. So with that combination, what do we have? We have RSI divergence. And right here, if I zoom in, we have our hammer candle. Pretty easy to see, but again, our objective way of defining this from the low of the candle to the high of the candle, very easily can see that that finishes the whole body of that candle is above the 38.2% retracement. Let's do this, have an appropriate stop loss and go for a two to one reward to risk ratio. And let's click play to see how this one played out. Oh no, it got stopped out. Crazy, right? <laughs> I always like throwing these in there because everybody's expecting every trade to win when in fact this happens as well. There will be times that everything lines up perfectly for your trade and you still end up with something like this where you push up three quarters of the way to your target and then push down and get stopped out. That's a little bit on trading psychology and risk management, which are topics that unfortunately I don't have time to get into in this video. But again, if you are interested in getting instant access to the whole TTC Forex University with all the lessons you see on the left side of your screen, along with everything we add in the future for the current price of only $497, then that link is in fact on the screen right now. Again, we're going to be adding a lot of content to this course throughout 2022. And because of putting in all that work, plus I'm more than likely going to be adding email alerts, which adds a lot more work to me, that is going to cause the price of the TTC Forex University to go up within 2022. So if you want to lock in your price at 497 bucks, again, link is on the page. You can go to www.ttcfxuniversity.com. .com. If not, again, that is totally fine. I'm not trying to sell you on anything if you're not interested in that. Just be sure you're subscribed here to keep getting alerted about the free content we come out with each and every week. Click that like button if you made it to the end of the video, along with commenting to let me know. We're coming up on New Year's, so I'm going to go ahead and wish you a happy 2022. I hope you trade green throughout all of 2022, and I'll see you in the next video. Talk soon.